part of me is really proud of seeing my student advance in such a way. Part of me wants to cave his skull in, <laughs> beating me at the main event of my own show. First uh, loss to your own first show. First loss, but uh, we'll put it together. Well, uh, at the end of the day, man, you just got to get in the ring and fight, and that's just what it comes down to. And so I'm sure our paths will cross again, and you know, there's no there's no gimmies, there's no guarantees other than the fact that I'm coming to take his head off. So... Uh, uh, I'll still try and train him to be the best wrestler that I can make out of him whenever I get the chance. But if we meet in the ring, you know, nobody's your friend when they're in front of you. That's true. Slate it, slate it. All right, hold on. First thing we need to do. This technically is a beer podcast. Yeah. Open up the beer. Cheers to you. Woo. That is not a beer we should be drinking out of a can. <laughs> no, it's really more of a bottled beer, but no. I think it all works, you know, at the end of the day. I mean... I didn't want, we didn't want it to be as pink either, but we, if you knew the struggles we went through to get this thing to market, you'd understand. So, but, okay, well. It worked out and that TAPS stepped up, really helped us out, did a great job for us. I mean, they've been in on this the whole way um, and got to, got to give a big shout out to TAPS for helping us. Hell yeah, TAPS Brewing. Do you remember the first day we got together and thought about like making a beer? <laughs> I, it was two years ago. It was a while ago, yeah. <laughs> and we knew that with those ex mesquite smoke bourbon barrels, that there was some possibility there to create something delicious and unique, and that we already had on hand. So uh, it was about finding the right type of beer to take advantage of it, because barrel aging was the entire point of, uh, of using these barrels in the first place to get those notes of smoke and sherry and bourbon and all of those wonderful things that come with uh, Warbringer whiskey. So it had to be something that could be barrel aged, which meant high proof. It could have been a stout, could have been a particular type of porter maybe, but at the end of the day, barley wine just really seemed to be the right choice. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, we tasted a bunch of their different types of styles and try to figure out what the best fit was. But I think you made the right choice. I don't think IPA would have been the way to go. No. Barrel aged IPA? No. <laughs> well, for those that are just, uh, you know, checking out the show, we created this black blood of the earth. We are here live at Grill em All for the... Yeah, uh, not oil. We mean black blood of the earth. Black blood of the earth. Uh, just... Tasting it here for the first time since we got it in our hands for the first time at the brewery. And, you know, how are you feeling? How did you, why did you want to do something so intense as your first offering to the world as opposed to like most people that are just dropping lager or something easy to drink? Uh, because most people are dropping lager and something easy to drink <laughs> or an IPA and trying to give you a bunch of uh, high alcohol, but we're using tons of hops to cover up all the imbalanced aspects of the beer, all the other things that didn't sort out were the shit. So they just punch you in the face with hops and alcohol and go, ah, it's, it's all good. So for me, I thought, no, I wanted something that would, all, would not only punch you in the face, be as intense as me and as intense as Warbringer whiskey, but also have complexity and a lot of depth of flavor uh, intensity. Um, this thing has a lot going on in it. Um, and I don't mind that it's not a beer for everyone. Right, right. Well, I mean, your your uh, particular brand, I would say, is not for everyone. It's for more like people like myself and other metalheads and people that like violence. Uh, so, you know, it is a particular crowd. And you seem to be, you know, you have it honed in with this. So tell people that may not be aware what the name is uh, in oh. reference to. Well... I had a, like a whole list 
of like a half thought out or sketched out names. I had different types of words just written down that I was working off of to see what combinations evoked the right emotional response and gave the right kind of uh, a, a cueing to what it was you were going to drink to, to set the stage. And uh, honestly, I'm a huge John Carpenter fan and uh, Big Trouble in Little China is an amazing film. One of my favorites of all time. Okay. And there's this scene where they're underground. The He's supposed ancient tunnels underneath San Francisco and uh, they're traveling through these tunnels and there's this riverway underneath it and uh, Jack Burton turns to uh, uh, their, the head sorcerer there uh, God, what is his name? Uh, now I'm blanking too. You remember the sorcerer's name? From well, I know that the, the, the evil sorcerer is Lopan. Yeah. And the good sorcerer's name is... Uh, Why? Well, I can't remember this. Uh, great character actor. Rest in peace. Uh, incredible work. And in also like the golden child and a mm -hmm. uh, whole spate of films. Anyways, <laughs> he goes, what is that? And, he, and the sorcerer goes, black blood of the earth. So Jack Burton goes, what, you mean oil? He goes, no, I mean black blood of the earth. And so I just thought, okay, black blood of the earth. This is a dark as hell beer. It's a barley wine. And uh, I don't know. It sounded metal as fuck. Yeah. And made for a good logo. Yeah. Done by Solo Michello. So were there any other names that were close? Uh, like Teddy Bear Rainbow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have to, you know what? I don't even know if I kept all those notes uh, in here because yeah I my brain was thinking like oh you know maybe like uh, head crusher or double arm you know double, double wrist the uh, wrist lock I don't know something like that <laughs> yeah you know I uh, I just wanted I, how do I put it I just I needed to be something that Something cool? <laughs> something cool, something heavy, something that uh, evoked like an, an, like an intense feeling and idea behind it. Mm. And it just, I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone, show, show some love and homage, but also put something on this label that I felt would accurately represent what you're getting. Yeah. And, you know, maybe if you drank the black blood of the earth while you're underneath the uh, the streets of San Francisco you'll say that it matches up <laughs> I don't know if it's because I'm such a alcoholic or what but it's actually Egg easy Shan. it's easy to drink Egg Shan was the, the name, name yeah. was the name of uh, the other sorcerer like this is going down too easy is what I was saying <laughs> like, mm. it is very smooth it's very soft um, and you can definitely taste the bourbon it's, which is the, the key I think Mm. To making it yours. Um, so, do you remember the first beer you ever had? And how old were you? Young. I couldn't recall. And I just hated it. It tasted like shit. And you know it had to be um, oh your run-of-the-mill, cheap, mass Oldie. market. No, King it wasn't. Cobra. <laughs> no, you know, it was something given to me. So, it must have been, you know, your standard Miller Bud, Coors kind of thing. Uh, okay. Natty Ice, whatever. I don't One know. Of those. I, I don't even know if Natty Ice is around when I had my first beer. So in fact, you, actually, I don't think they were doing ice yet. Were you? Because I remember that when you that, weren't of age, were you? Oh no. Okay. <laughs> but uh, that whole ice concept for beers—that was everywhere. Yeah, that Bud was. Bud Ice, Miller Ice. Everyone was doing an ice variant. Yeah, because they try to pitch that you know ice cold beer is the best beer to drink, but that's because the beer tastes so bad. People may not know that, that the colder the beer is, the less flavor you get from it. It's the same for all alcohol, all yeah. spirits. Um, the colder or hotter, even warmer, it, it hides the imperfections. Yeah. Uh, and also, in terms of spirits, will reduce the taste of the alcohol aspect, especially if it's particularly young. So when they want to serve you warm sake, oh, usually no. they're serving you the cheapest stuff out there. That makes sense. That makes sense. 
Yeah, that's why Miller Coors. That's why Coors is like they have the mountains on the front. It's like it, the colder the beer, the bluer the mountains. Like, yeah, please drink it as as cold as possible <laughs> so you don't taste how horrible it is. Uh, but yeah, all right. So that's cool. I mean, I remember. I think my first sip of alcohol I was twelve. And I had wine, I think it was, at 12. And then I had a Heineken when I was, like, I don't know, 13 or 14 or something. I, I must have been, like, 14, 15 when I had my first beer. And then uh, I think I remember being at a kegger in, like, senior year of high school and drinking some beers and that being okay. But then by the time I got to college and uh, still underage, I <laughs> developed a bit of a taste for Guinness and Bass. Mm. Those I like. Okay, okay. Or Harp Lager as well. So Yeah, Harp's good. Yeah, that's a good one. So, okay, speaking of lagers and all that, I mean, we have this one here now, but will there be more beers from uh, the War Master? I don't know. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a possibility. Um, although, I think if I was to do something else, I would do something that wasn't really tied into the whiskey side of things. Mm. Uh, I would do something very, knowing me, I'd probably go full lager or ale, really something that is delicious, has kind of a nutty, malty aspect to it, and just mm. easy drinking, goes great cold, room temperature, whatever, that kind of thing. Mm. That's what I think I would do. Um, because I just love a beer that you can just pop the top without even thinking about it and get and go to work and crush the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think so. You know, especially with the events like we we launched the the first official time that it was available for purchase. This was at Bloodsport. Yes, and I mean, at a live wrestling event, it's kind of an intense beer to have. So having something that's a little more crushable at I a mean, live honestly, event. Honestly, we were really more concerned that people were going to get wrecked <laughs> drinking a can of beer and yeah. not realizing not really paying attention to the fact that it's 11 percent alcohol 11 and you know <laughs> slam a couple of them and then just be stumbling all over the place or uh t- telling your man how much you uh you're actually really pissed off about the last thing he did or who knows what <laughs> oh man all right so uh would you give me by the way sepultura roots era the best? No. No? The worst? No. Not the worst. I would just say that it was a very distinct change in tempo and rhythm. Mm. Uh, it has its highlights, but honestly, if, if we're sitting here and you're going to say, like, Beneath the Remains versus Roots, no. no. Beneath the Remains all day, let alone uh, Arise, greatest Sepultura album ever made. Fight me. Did you see the the announcement from Max that he and Igor are going to be doing Cavalera again and and re-recorded the first two albums? The first two Sepultura albums. You say, what now? Why would yeah. they even do that? So, Schizophrenia and Beneath I, the Remains? I forget the name. I forget Why would the they, name. But they already made them. Better sound, I guess. Better quality equipment at this day and age. Thing, all they do nowadays is just remaster shit. Oh yeah, it? we're out of ideas. We're out of ideas. All the movies are remakes. All the video games are remakes. All the fucking music is just re-recorded old albums. It's well, it's fine. We're yes, in a that, cycle. Yeah, well, we're uh, <laughs> we're in the decline uh, <laughs> stage. So civilization. So yeesh. Yeah. Right. Uh, so give me your top three beers that you know. It, it, I would find in your fridge Coors, or Coors Light. <laughs> Aside from this one, um, is this still generally looking, look, uh, the, this camera. Can Are we still in frame? Was on frame? Uh, okay, okay. Trust the cameraman to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a cameraman. <laughs> Shout out to Devilman. What was yeah. it? Devilman? Huh? Devilman? What's your handle 138. again? One thirty-eight. One thirty-eight. Yeah, Devilman. Not one thirty-eight. 138. Yes, that's right. That's right. Um, all right, so top three beers. Well, first you said ones that you might find in my fridge. Generally, none. None. Not no, a big beer know. drinker on the regular. Um, I'm more of a whiskey guy. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm going to be buying beers and bringing them home, uh, hmm. You, you know, give me shit all you want, but I love PBR. 
It's just a, like a cheap crusher type of beer. Well, it used to be cheap. Then the hipsters made it popular. Now it's normal. <laughs> now it's a normal price. Uh, <laughs> and I even like those stupid Foster's oil cans. Okay. Okay. But, you know, that, that's definitely something you want to have Foster's. cold. Australian. Foster's. Foster's. Um, but honestly, if we're getting into, like, legitimate, serious, well, not that they're not legitimate, but serious beer stuff. Um, You're going to find me generally with lagers. Okay. Uh, Because I think of beers as usually like a quick drink. Okay. Uh, And and honestly, that could vary. I don't, I've always enjoyed stuff from 805 they make decent decent stuff Firestone. all the way across yeah, Firestone, Firestone, Firestone. Yeah, yeah. or 805 is one of their yeah it's their honey blonde yeah. um, so beer is usually a chaser for you yeah <laughs> kind of uh, but if I'm gonna sit down and like have sweet sweet conversations with it it's gonna be something like this mm-hmm. um, I do like the Belgian offerings uh, I like Stella quite a bit, but see, the thing is, another reason why I don't usually carry beers at the house is I like beer on draft. Mm. That's how I enjoy beer best. So what I'm hearing is you need to get a kegerator. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 there is no good things that can come from that. <laughs> but but yeah, generally I'm a draft guy, so I don't really go out. If I go out to buy beer, I generally go out to buy a, a two fosters for five bucks mm. or I'll buy uh, a case for a party of some sort and then I'll usually get a, a decent lager that I think everybody will enjoy uh, or I might have to get a light if I think that people are going to be more in that direction because it's usually then it's it's people aren't really thinking so much about sitting down and they're going to sip this beer alone. no they're just kind of they're just throwing back something to drink yeah. in the realm of what you might do with a soft drink, but obviously, it's not soft. Unless it's uh, Coors. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> but um, uh, I have to think. Um, I don't necessarily hone in on a particular. If I'm on the East Coast, I drink Yinglings, oh. just because I enjoy and That's I enjoy the one. fact that. And this also goes for PBR. Part of my attraction to those beers is that. They're some of the oldest in the United States. In fact, Yingling being the oldest. Mm. So I like putting my money into things that have stood the test of time. Right. That are, you know, you distinctly American and have been here. Uh, I like old style too, uh, which Paps picked up at some point. So if I'm in Chicago, I'm going to be drinking old styles. Okay. Um, okay. Here, here's one. Whenever I go home to Washington, I buy, I buy vitamin R. I buy, I buy Rainier. Rainier. I had a few of those while I was out there. Yeah, I like Olympias still. I mean, these are my dirt bag, whatever, you know, inexpensive lagers. Uh, but I like I like Belgian, the Belgian triples. I like all the monk brood stuff. Um, but, you know, that's a lot to drink. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it, uh, it's going to be one, or one split with someone else over time. Uh, I've always been a fan of Unibrew. Unibrew's great, um, yeah. And the, that, well, and the fact that they do Megadeth beer, that's cool. That too, too. Yeah. And uh, whatever Yoan uh, does from a Monomarth, if yeah. he does, he, they did one with Three Floyds, which I drank before. Uh, oh, there is beer in my refrigerator, but it is there are really cla- they're really old classic bottles of True. Ah. So yes. I don't even know if they're any good anymore. If they're sours, they're fine. Okay. Yeah. True does do a lot of sours. Although my favorite true beers are um, cold, which is a Pilsner. Um, uh, what? We have is, one that's like a guitar pedal. I forget. Yeah, that one. Uh, that one's called. Uh, oh. That's the other one that I really is it like. Overdrive a lot. or no, <laughs> no. But it's got a Boss, uh, basically a Boss HM2 pedal outline yeah, on it. Yeah. It's called. Uh, Oh my God! I don't know why I can't remember the name of this beer. Yeah. Um, cursed. Cursed. Sonoran Deprivation is good, yeah. which is uh, obviously a title for um, a Gate Creeper song, mm-hmm. and uh, um, uh, all the artwork is done by a cat named uh, Sam Turner, and it's the best. Look, I love my beer label a lot. Sam Turner's beer labels are like. 
the top of the pops. Like he's his a, art is incredible. Yeah, he's a student. I don't know if he's a student, but like his style is very reminiscent of that, like Bakshi, you know, the old school, like that Wizards movie. I oh, you think Bakshi? I would say. His line work is so clean. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to like wizards and monsters and skeletons and hot chicks, like yeah, he destroys. Right. That's why. That's why Bakshi comes to mind, just because of the, like the old like the chemist album covers. He does those. Too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There are some Bakshi elements in it. I could say a lot of Frazetta esque. Yeah. Frazetta but he, too. his yeah. cleanliness. Um, it's just really unique. It's like his his art isn't very dirtied up. He can do it that way, but yeah. he's he's got a really uh, interesting way of dis- It's almost like graphic design in a modern sense, as well as old fantasy art, without being overly busy. Even yeah. though he does have a lot of artwork, uh, a lot of line work in his stuff, I'm just a huge fan. Yeah, yeah. No, same here. I mean, I, I discovered his art through Chemist. Obviously, drummer of Chemist, uh, head oh, brewer yes. of True, you know. And me and Zach have talked about how we can drink one of just about anything on the menu. Yeah. And then it's like we just go right to cold. Yeah. <laughs> just drink that. That's most brewers. Most brewers, especially brewers that make sour beers or big crazy beers, are like, they go home and they're drinking oh, yeah. lagers or pilsners. That's it. Well, I mean, or cocktails. You know, you know. Uh, much uh, respect to True. Uh, those sours they're making, some of them are really pretty, like, intense stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, drinking a whole bunch of them, I just couldn't do it. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> I love the way they taste, but my tummy hurts afterwards. Too many. Um, all right. So, for this... Well, I had a Cigar City beer while I was in Tampa last. Oh, did you? I did, just for you. Oh, which one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> was it mine? No, no it wasn't that one. No. <laughs> okay. I think it was a lager or an ale. It was something okay. simple. But it was good. Yeah. For those that don't know that are watching the show, I I created Guayabera, the number two best selling beer at Cigar City Brewing. What's it called? Guayabera. It's a pale ale, citra pale ale. It might I, have been the one. Maybe. I got a silver medal for that. And uh, I couldn't take credit for it because I created it under the roof of Cigar City. And that was part of my contract when I was there became their employee so this is officially the first rrbg <laughs> beer that i can put my name on but there's the guayabera and the kill switch beer yeah yeah so i mean it's 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 something that i've been working trying to get this launched so i'm happy and, and and no better person to you know team up with to do something like this so the beer itself is aged in the barrels the bourbon barrels of the Warbringer bourbon that you you know work with cesspa creek tell yes. me tell tell the people your involvement in the actual distilling and, and all the process of that? Uh, well, I, I've worked every part of the job in the distillery, including distilling the spirits themselves. Um, there's a good chance you've ever been drinking my whiskey that I've either distilled it, I mashed the grain, or I roasted the corn, or everything and, and on a process. Definitely if you've had any of our rum, Parlor K, um, there are rum runs where that was me, you know, alongside David Brandt uh, doing our distillation. Um, I'm very proud of what we make out of Sespe Creek. It is award winning. That's a fact. We have won best pot still. We have won gold medals at San Francisco and World Whiskies. Our vodka run bet, won best varietal in the world. Nice for inter, uh, spirits competition, uh, world 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 spirits competition, world world vodka awards, I guess. Uh, but you know, we go out there, we crush. Um, but we're small, so I can talk about it all day. It's not always the easiest thing to get, especially if you're not living in California. But when it came to the whiskey, um, it's a very unique flavor profile, and that we mesquite smoke the corn before we put it in the mash. Mm. which gives it a huge, huge smoky uh, nose and palate. And part of that smoke, we want it to be imported, imparted into this barley wine uh, to cut through some of the sweetness and dark chocolate and coffee elements and, and mix with those. Now, you say we, when you were mentioning, like we made the, the vodka and this and that with, in regards to Sespe Creek. 
I mean, are you an investor? Are you an, you know, like, is it just your friends and you're there helping out? Like, what's what's no, the connection? No, it was a there? company that that came to me at one point when I was actually, uh, coincidentally, on the hunt to work with a whiskey company, to mm. work with a whiskey distillery to to produce a beer. Or not, sorry, a beer. Oh, to uh, produce a whiskey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'd seen how celebrities were starting to ramp up again in terms of pushing spirits out on the world. And I just was looking at this going like, wow, they'll just give one of these to anyone. And hell, most of these people probably don't even like seriously drink and break these things down and spend time with them you know it's i just felt like what i would bring to the table not only would it be far more sincere by and large but it would it would have a whole lot more effort put into it than what you would usually expect and lo and behold uh Sespe creek reached out to me we got together first project we came up with to do the War Master edition of Warbringer, doing a single barrel product, of which I pick all the barrels. I, I pick the blends as well. So I've kind of become the in-house sommelier for the brand. Nice. Um, as well as working every aspect of the business um, and even you know doing whatever is necessary to help get it out there and get it in the hands of people that really want to drink it. So, um, you know, making whiskey is not just about making this whiskey for me it, it is about being a part of that line that lineage of whiskey makers that goes back so many hundreds of years and how much technique uh, skill passion and just know-how that comes from apprenticeship that has been passed down throughout the ages you know to, to continue to put these spirits in the world so yeah. I saw it as like a, a project just that was even bigger than myself. Yeah, and I appreciate like when I saw started seeing pictures of you actually in there graining and you know doing the work. It it made me feel good because there's like you said, there's so many celebrities jumping into the spirits world, and they're all they're doing is signing a contract and putting slapping their name on the bottle. They're not they're not in there putting the work. They're well, not there's doing a lot any of it. white labeled stuff out there. You just all you got to do is pick up the bottle and just start reading it and if you know what to look for it'll stay if it doesn't say if it says if it gives you this big grand rich backstory about someone's great grandpappy and all this and all the things that they used to do in the whiskey and uh, just read the label and more often than not you'll look on turn that label around and they'll go on about this huge story in i don't know kentucky or tennessee or whatever mm -hmm. and you read the label it says it'll say distilled in Indiana, generally, which would be not Kentucky. It would be MGP, which, by the way, does not disqualify something from being good or not, because MGP is the biggest grain producer for distillates, I believe, in the world. And they have incredible stocks on hand that you can choose from and can make you anything you might want uh, with some of the best people that there are to make it. However, uh, it could also say... Uh, distilled in Kentucky, in Kentucky and bottled in wherever they claim the story's from. That generally means they're buying it from Bardstown or they're buying it from Sazerac or they're buying it from whoever and then slapping a label on it, selling you a big story and then you think you're buying some whiskey in this long lost line of lineage to this great elder. No, you're not. You're just buying repackaged wild turkey. <laughs> Ah, shit. If it was Brown Foreman, anyways. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, why buy repackaged wild turkey when you can just buy a wild turkey? That's it's right. Good. That's right. Yeah. yeah, you're just buying marketing at that point, yes. you know? Yeah. And I don't want to put anybody under the bus, but I mean, like, for example, the Deftones put out a, uh, a weed box. And it was a package where you get a bunch of joints and, like, vape pens and stuff. I did the math because I know people in the business. It was a two hundred dollar package, and they were selling it for four hundred and twenty dollars. Oh wow! Because four twenty. Ah uh, yes. But also, you know, because just you could slap the Deftones name on it. Yeah. People will buy it. Hey, if I was the Deftones, price. then I would sell this beer for sixty nine dollars. <laughs> but I'm not, so, and they're a lot more popular than me. So anybody that's watching and it hasn't tried the beer yet, or can get your hands on it, know that we went through a lot of work. Josh put in the work. 
we, we, we went through a lot of effort to make this isn't this isn't a white labeled beer. Not only did we have to, you know, Josh had to distill the bourbon itself, get those barrels, take them himself, drive them to Eddie, fucking- Eddie bought all the cans. He bought all the labels. I got the artwork done. Uh, we hauled ass to get this done on time to get it ready for blood sport uh, to the point that we were boxing and packaging it ourselves. I rented a like trailer. Like a week before blood yeah. sport. <laughs> I rented a trailer to carry the beer. Um, like this... Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, this is not a joke. More and tears than blood, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't know how much. It was a lot of work. I don't want to get into the details, the nitty gritty of how much effort went into this. It was, but at the but end of the day, we're here sitting we, here. Yeah, when we sat there, even at taps, mm. even the uh, the first tasting session we did, which was almost a year before we got this thing out. Yep. Um, yep. Everybody sat down and we were all really happy with it. Yep. yep. And we talked about how we were going to vat blend and what the carbonation levels would be. And man, the, the brewers there were like, we like it. We're happy with this. We're proud. And we're proud too. And so we're really glad for all of us to come together, put our skills, efforts, and love into making this, and then have it available for everybody else. Yeah, man. And, and like, down to the wire like we were sampling it while it was getting canned and still tweaking i was like you know what it needs a little more carbonation i think it needs a little bit more uh you know the o2 the co2 for the to to have a little to that point like to the point of we're still we're like right at the canning lines moment and we're still tweaking it so a lot of work went into it i'm very happy with the way it turned out um going back to spirits world your name, your your bourbon, you know, even though you're working, doing the vodka and helping out with the distillery, your bourbon is the War Master Warbringer. The War Master Edition is, well, it started off, I mean, it's got my name on it, for yeah. one, uh, but it, it is, was hand, every single barrel is handpicked by me, and it's still that way. So It does not get released unless I say it's a War Master. Okay. And even the blends go out, I'm tasting those blends before they hit the market, uh, trying to, excuse me, trying to taste for consistency in mm. terms of what our product has been and trying to keep that, well, it's just like, look, if you buy a Johnny, a, a bottle of Johnny Walker Black, you, you should know what it's going to taste like. I want Warbringer to be the same way. Okay. Now, is there another spirit you would put your name on like that? Would like vodka or a gin or a oh, rum? Uh, uh, yeah, I would be totally down to put my name on honestly any spirit that I felt was being done honestly, sincerely, was correct. I mean, it, it's all about like what are we doing it for mm -hmm. and what's going into it and what are the, is it anything that I think is. Uh, indicative of who I am and what I want to be a part of. And if it's, if it meets that criteria, I'm down. But if it's just something like, Oh, we'll just throw your name on some shit. I just, I don't care. I am. That's not, that doesn't interest me. And, um, of course, you know, you say that and, uh, look at Brown Foreman came up to me tomorrow and said, we're going to give you a God awful amount of money to, do basically a line where we're just going to pick barrels out of our already uh, Rick house. I'm not going to say no <laughs> because Brown Foreman has probably insane barrels just sitting around back there that are incredible. But yeah. um, I, I do believe that when it comes to making spirits, it's got to be quality. It really just it just has to. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be super unique. It doesn't have to. I don't know what are they always trying to say like um and have to completely change the landscape or no I, I like the landscape the way it is yeah i like it just fine i like the way whiskey is i like the way gin is i like the way all, all this stuff has been for like the last hundred years it's already good yeah uh, as long as it's in line with that kind of vision then yeah i'm down with it i don't need to add hops to my whiskey <laughs> but if you can find a way to actually make it taste good at some point, well, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Because so far, that would be a big no. No, no. Um, all right. So give the give the viewers and listeners three bourbons that they should have on their in their liquor cabinet. Keep in mind, not everybody has War Master money, and also don't include the War Master 
Warbringer. <laughs> that, that one's too hard to get. It sells out instantly every time. Okay. So, barring any of my own stuff. Yeah. Three bourbons that I think that you should have on hand. Yeah. Like if somebody was I you should have you Old over. Granddad 114. Okay. Uh, often overlooked, high proof, fully embodies all the essentials of bourbon in terms of its notes um, of the vanilla and cherry and butter and um, just the right amount of oak tannin in there. I mean, it is a beautiful whiskey. One of my absolute favorites it is daily drinker type stuff for me. Uh, so I'd say Old Granddad 114. I will say... Um, and it's not expensive, by the way. It's not very pricey. It's like maybe 30 bucks. Well, maybe. that's good. Maybe. Um, uh, I, you wouldn't go wrong with uh, Four Roses Single Barrel, I believe. Yep, Four Roses um, is great. And then for a third bourbon... You know what? Uh, pick up something from Doc Swinson's, which does a lot of different barrel finishing. And they have one that's like cognac, sherry, and something else. They're up in Washington State. I don't know exactly where they're sourcing their whiskey from, but they're doing all the barrel finishing up there, I believe. And uh, they've come up with some really killer stuff. So then that would add a little unique gem to whatever it is you have in your liquor cabinet. Uh, you've got your basics with that old granddad. You've got, um, uh, what was my second one again? Oh, uh, you've got a single barrel offering with four, four roses. roses. Yep. Uh, and it's a decently high rye bill, so it, it, it's a little, there's difference from Granddad by far. And then you've got um, Doc Swinson's stuff, which is going to have barrel finishes that are going to completely change the game. Okay. okay. So between those three, you should be able to find something you like. So if you have those uh, yeah. three in your house and for some reason Josh comes over, he'll be happy to, to drink all your supply. <laughs> yes. On ice or not, it's up to you. <laughs> all right. All right. So is that your pre – like, what's your preference? On uh, the I drink most stuff neat, but it uh, depends on my mood. So okay. sometimes at the end of the night, uh, I'll, uh, I'll throw a big cube in. The big, like, the ball or the big square cube? Yeah. All right. uh, you know, and if I'm at a – at a dirty rock venue, listening to metal music, I'll probably just grab Wild Turkey 101 or Makers or whatever's available, throw it over ice, and just, you know, crunch away. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're here at Gorilla Mall. There is a War Master burger here as well that, that we put together with, with Nikki and, and the great people here at Gorilla Mall. What was the... What was your mindset when trying to put together the ingredients that go into it? So just to let people know what's in it right now, cream cheese, pepper jack cheese, jalapeno bacon, fried pickles, yeah. and a barbecue sauce made with your From bourbon. Warbringer bourbon, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I wanted the smoky barbecue aspect from the Warbringer bourbon, but the inspiration was a Seattle street dog. Ah. Which is a hot dog, you know, well, a link, or a kielbasa, or hot, hot link, whatever, with uh, a cream cheese schmear mm. on the bun. And you drop the hot dog in there, and it just melts around it. And usually I'll do grilled onions, uh, jalapenos, and sriracha and mayonnaise. Mm. Okay. Uh, so something along the lines of the street Seattle street dog giving... Some uh, homage to where I'm from, and Nikki just came up with, "Oh, you, you like spicy food too? Well, how about we do this kind of bacon? And we, how about we do this kind of like? Wow, okay, didn't even know that they had ghost pepper cheese and these different things. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, the, adding the fried pickles on the end was like just really. It's a good way really to cut the spice. Genius. Yeah, yeah. So grill them all, and Nikki just just came up with a and looks, hell of a burger. So you know you're not full of shit. He just devoured one right yeah, now. Yeah. So it is, uh, That is my meal for the night. That's <laughs> it. It is no joke. I once did it with behemoth buns. Never again. Oh, I yeah. It is way too much. I couldn't finish it. I couldn't finish it. I was starting to sweat. It was ridiculous. Uh, all right. So switching off to the... Uh, you, you're a man of many things. Liquor and uh, metal is one of those things. So... 
What are some band releases that you're excited about for this year? Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, I thought about sending you these questions so you can prepare, but then I'm like, nah, fuck it. I have not been listening to <laughs> any new metal whatsoever. Oh. Okay. What are you listening to? Boy bands? <laughs> no. I mean, it kind of runs the gamut a bit. Uh, there are some places that I never venture, but uh, <laughs> metal-wise, I mean... Uh, I know that your boys are probably working on a new one, the Abyssal Abyssal Dawn. Oh, yeah, Maybe? you know, Charles sure. has to figure something else, something to do <laughs> besides play video games yeah, and right. make make records for other people. Oh yeah. Um, you know what? I, um, or any that came out recently that you're into as well. Well, um, Alan Avril of Primordial has a new black metal project. I have to look it up. Okay. Uh, because I don't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, but I do dig it. It's very good. Um, give me just one second. No worries. We're watching Bloodsport. Verminous Serpent. Verminous Serpent. Okay. Verminous Serpent. Very good. Uh, yeah. He also did a collaboration project called Nest. Uh, okay. Also badass. Uh, I'd say check out... Earthhouse uh, from the Netherlands. We just actually did an exchange of. Uh, they sent me their Teufelsgeist Devil Spirit um, gin, and Ooh. I sent them some Warmaster. Nice, nice. Um, although that doesn't mean it's available in the Netherlands, unless you're good friends with Earthhouse. Then maybe they'll let you have some. <laughs> um, would not be surprised uh, if Behemoth or a Monomarth or what. I mean, they, those guys are always writing you know what i mean yeah behemoth his uh, newest record was so good and it was the very, live very, show very was good. so good we, we went to that that was um, insane honestly my biggest suggestion is one check out all your local stuff so i saw that there's a show coming up with abysmal dawn and uh imperium imperium yeah. or imperialist i think it, i got i'm screwing the name up science fiction black metal out of la good stuff okay okay um seen them live great live too uh go check out your live bands and live acts and then get on Bandcamp. yep buy get from Bandcamp. Band camp. get on Bandcamp and just start slogging through the weirdest oddest sounding labels go through that and you'll find the coolest stuff that way hell yeah hell yeah i'm uh excited i don't know if you heard i had adam d on the pod he's working on a uh, new serpentine dominion with with Mr. Corpse Grinder, so that should be fun. I'm excited for that. George is a sweet dude, yeah, as well. I yeah. mean, they're both super sweet guys. Uh, yeah. Some of the nicest dudes, making some of the heaviest, gnarliest metal. <laughs> um, Entheos put out a really good uh, death metal record. If you haven't heard that one too, I haven't. Entheos is really really good. Uh, I think I don't know. That's pretty much it. I've actually been too busy to listen to new music as well, like you. I, I just uh, I gravitate towards. Uh, lectures and podcasts and you know stuff that I'm interested in uh, in, the, in the space of learning different things or hearing new arguments but when it comes to music I've just been going back to old standbys kind of stuff but uh, when do you listen to metal is it when you're working out is that like your preferred time generally yeah uh, well actually that's the thing is some of the stuff that I listen to some of these lectures and whatever they're multi-part or they're like three hours long. Mm. So I listen to those while I lift weights. Oh. But how do you stay? I don't know. I feel like I need the, the blood pumping metal to, it, uh, to get me going. I, I, can't, I'm not, I cannot claim that the workouts are better uh. with uh, while I'm listening to some sort of lecture as they are when I'm listening to just straight up metal. Uh, they're, they're way, the gains are <laughs> way better with metal. Yeah, that's, they're a, not that's a fact. Bigger gains with metal, smarter gains oh, look, with podcasts. It's Taya. Oh, Taya Valkyrie yeah. on television, our, our good friend. Yeah, uh, AEW's on TV, and the other TV has got Bloodsport. Uh, speaking of Bloodsport, when's the next Bloodsport? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea at this point. Uh, I mean, the last one was a success, yes? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, in fact... We've never had one that wasn't a success in one way or the other. But uh, 
Yeah, I don't I don't know when we're gonna do our next one. It's um, last one was in April. Well, actually, end of March. End of March, yep. But might as well be April. So um, it was we're like not a, a huge hurry. Mm-hmm. Um, Bloodsport ten is a it's ten. Ten is a big number. It is. So it is. I'm assuming we're, you know, you're looking to go big, for ten maybe. Everybody, bigger, bigger. bigger than, oh, we'll see. Um, I guess I got to start working on that. <laughs> well, hopefully it's in LA so I can go. I, you know, I don't mind traveling, but it's easier if it's in town. It's a lot easier if it's in LA for everybody involved. Yeah, it's yeah. also a lot easier to get people here from uh, from wherever they're at in the U.S. or even internationally to LA of all things. Yeah, yeah. Who she? Who is this? Oh, that is Jade Cargill. Well, I couldn't tell with all the okay now I bad can see. lighting <laughs> with all the bad lighting. Look, I like the talent on AEW, but their production team needs oh. to step it up. Yeah, Jade, there's something Jade's going a on. Specimen. I, yeah, I she think is. Of her like a like a female Lex Luger, right? Like just. Well, she's still undefeated, so she's technically the uh, the Goldberg of oh, the female wrestling. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Well, <laughs> great look. Yeah. Obviously, a hell of a like physical specimen yeah but uh you know she's got height to go with it too which is which is really cool for yeah. women's division and yeah very very much uh reminiscent of lex luger i love it to quote to quote jr your old buddy uh, he hell of an athlete <laughs> yeah i learned a lot from that man i'm very lucky to be able to sit in a booth alongside jim ross for many years man that's i mean that's got to be I, I wouldn't. I don't know if it's a dream come true, but it's just something. That's a life achievement. It was achievement. too surreal to even be that. Right? Yeah. That was just not something on my radar, fucking ever. Yeah. yeah. So last blood sport, blood sport nine. Uh, you suffered at the feet. Yeah. At the hands of Tim Thatcher, s- old your student. student. Yeah. Um, is there? Do you want revenge? A yeah, part of me definitely is. A part of me is really proud of seeing my student advance in such a way part of me wants to cave his skull in <laughs> beating me at the main event of my own show uh, first loss to your own first show first loss but uh we'll put it together well uh, at the end of the day man you just got to get in the ring and fight and that's just what it comes down to and so i'm sure our paths will cross again and you know there's no there's no gimmies there's no guarantees other than the fact that I'm coming to take his head off. So uh, uh, I'll still try and train him to be the best wrestler that I can make out of him whenever I get the chance. But if we meet in the ring, you know, nobody's your friend when they're in front of you. That's true. That's true. Now, I know you're still trying to piece things together, but do you have like a goal to keep Bloodsport running past your time in in the ring? So, Uh, see, that's not actually that hard to do, to be honest. When I'm not in, in uh, well, hold up. Hey, Diego, what'd you think? <laughs> Delicious, powerful, too strong. Too strong. Uh, it, uh, it, it's actually not that hard to do if I'm not in the ring. And I did Bloodsport 3 that way because I had a bare knuckle boxing match mm-hmm. in Poland. Um, after the show, so I was like, yeah, I'm not going to risk it um, getting hurt before my big fight. Sure. Um, but yeah, I'm, whether I'm wrestling in it or not, it's still Josh Barnett's blood sport. So you're gonna, you're, your plan is to keep it going. Uh, maybe I don't know if you want to keep the frequency increase increase the frequency of it. Um, I know we've discussed it before too, but the possibility of having like a blood sport championship or a trophy or Something like that. Is that has that uh, changed? It's been on my mind. We've tried to do it before with the concept of the Gotch Robinson Cup and doing a one night tournament once a year uh, with no belts. Just you, if you can win the open tournament, that's it, and till the next year. Cool. Um, but uh, I, I think I'd like to do like a minimum of four a year, but I also don't want to do one every month. Yeah, that's too much. Oversaturation. We have enough wrestling as it is, guys. By the way, if you're planning on opening up or starting a wrestling promotion, don't. There's enough. <laughs> Thank you. Wait uh, for like a couple to fail first. Right. Yeah. Let some of them close down. <laughs> um, next fight 
you know, you've had wrestling matches, you know, you're, you're planning ahead for blood sports, but when's your next MMA fight? No plans yet? No. Uh, going to head over to Japan here uh, shortly. I have a lot of meetings with folks, so you know, maybe something will, will come about from that. Okay, okay. And, uh, you know, this is a tough question I don't like asking, but you and I are close in age. When do you think the time is up to hang up the gloves or whatever, hang up the wraps? Mm -hmm. And who would you like in your last MMA fight and your last wrestling fight? I have no match? idea. No uh, idea? I know that when it's time, I'll just know it. Yeah. It'll be... Will be evidently clear. <laughs> uh, All of the hair will be white, <laughs> not just the sides. It, it'll, it's more about how the knees are feeling and things oh, of that nature okay. than anything else. But uh, I don't know. I've never really given that much thought. Uh, I mean, and I'm not saying you're old and you should, you know. No, oh, I am old. <laughs> we're, we're both similar, close but, to uh, age. Yeah. For wrestling, final match, a lot of options to choose. So I don't want to. I don't want to hem myself into any one particular um, person at the moment, but uh, I could put together a list. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Realistically, though, how many years do you think we've got? Maybe five, six? Uh, Barring any injuries yeah. or anything, you know? I could see that. Five or six more years? Yeah. It's plenty. That's plenty of time. To make some... Uh, Although Jeff Jarrett's in the ring at what? 52? 55. 55. He's 55. I don't necessarily want to be doing pro wrestling at 55, but but then again, maybe if I was Jeff Jarrett, I would be. Yeah. As long as you're not Ric Flair's age when he's doing his last match. 76 or 2 or whatever <sighs> it was. God, man. Like, I love Ric Flair, but geez. Like, that was a tough watch. <laughs> It's just the balls to get in the ring at seventy some years old. Seriously, right I don't on. even. I wouldn't get out of bed at that age. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that's the last of the questions I have for you. If you want to talk about some of these seminars, you have a lot of seminars coming up. Plug oh, away. Uh, I have one at uh, this weekend at Cobra Kai in Chicago, I believe. Cobra Kai, like the Karate Kid. I think it's called something like that. <laughs> Or like the, I'm sorry, I'm like sorry. the new Netflix show. No, it's better than that. Crimson Guard. Oh yeah, that's much better. Crimson it's way Guard. Way cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had Crimson Guard figures from the original, from the uh, '80s GI Joe. Nice. They were cool as shit. All red with their crazy visors. Yes, Crimson Guard were awesome. They were also great to take apart and build other character, build other uh, figures out of. Yeah, Crimson Guard in Oakland, Illinois. Uh, that's uh, April 29th. And then April 30th, I have a seminar in Wisconsin for, it's here somewhere, or maybe it's not. Also, don't be weak. Go get these seminars. Go get, <laughs> go, go get your ass kicked by uh, the war mess. In uh, West Bend, uh, Wisconsin. At Neutral Ground Combat Sports. Personally, I wish I was doing my seminar at the Rave, the Eagles. Okay, okay. In Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Inside the giant uh, unoccupied, uh, 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 unused Olympic pool at yep. the bottom of it. Nice. All you touring musicians will be familiar with it. <laughs> and, uh, oh, on uh, May 22nd, 1720's got Free Metal Monday. Abysmal Dawn, Thrown to Exile. Imperialist, imperialist. That's the band I was thinking of. Uh, a band so good that I can't read the name. I can't read the, the name. That's how you know they're good. Yeah. When it's a bunch of tree branches and uh, cracked leather. <laughs> Bone Crown and Our Dying World. Oh. I can't speak for everyone on there, but Abysmal Dawn, Thrown into Exile, and Imperialist should rustle your jimmies in a good way. Free with just an RSVP. Well, if you're gonna be there, I actually know those dudes at 1720. Maybe you can find some of this there. Maybe. Maybe. I'll make some phone calls. We'll see yeah, what's they're, up. They're a pretty beer-forward venue. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. in the rough neighborhood, but... Yeah, you could use the beer to bargain your way out of a stabbing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, thank you very much for sitting with me for an hour talking shit. It's been a while, by the way. I looked through the records 
we we did comedy store wrestling together recently. Yeah. yeah. But it, 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 it's been a hundred and. Does that not count? Because Earl's there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Earl. Fuck Earl. <laughs> God. <laughs> no, but it. I checked. It was like a hundred episode, a hundred and thirty something last time you were on, and we're on like almost three hundred something. I don't even know the number. Three hundred nine, three hundred ten. Wow, okay. So it's been a. Ho- a hundred something episodes. It's been a while, but thank you as always. It's an honor to call you a friend and officially be partnered up with you to do a beer and all these things. We're gonna keep doing cool shit. Please tune in, Josh. Where do they follow you? Where do they where do they get all this information? At Josh L Barnett on Twitter and Instagram is probably the best, but I even still try to update Facebook, which is uh, Facebook jo- Josh Barnett official, and there's always uh, JoshBarnett.com. And also myspace.com slash John. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm sure it's still up. <laughs> Do you have a TikTok? You should never. start a TikTok. No dude. TikToks, no Snapchats, no. Come on. Never had a mine. I ain't doing any of that shit. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.